Hello everyone, back to you into today's video. We're going to do the first seasonal model roundup for the winter of 2014-2015 today. Uh, we've got eight seasonal models to get together um, and we're going to see what they're showing at this very early stage, in these early stages, uh, for the coming winter, winter of 2014-2015. Very exciting uh, development, so gather about this today. Now, before I get on with that, I just want to mention the ads. There's uh, links to articles sitting underneath the web video here on my homepage at gather about this. I actually got them on many of the pages at Gazware Viz. Uh, have a browse through those uh, articles. There are some very interesting articles in there. I've had a look myself. Um, have a browse through. If there's anything you're interested in, just click through. You'll be able to go off and, uh, you'll be able to go off and read the article. Same time, Gazware Viz gets royalty fee on what you're doing. Uh, also say about green keywords. I've brought back some green keyword ads. Not on every page, but if you see a green keyword, roll your cursor over the green word. It'll display an ad. But if you click through the word, that's the key. Click through the word and you go to Advertisers website. Site. At the same time, Gazda Bits will get a royalty fee on what you're doing. All these things are essentially paying for website, but allow me to sit here and talk to you via GazWebBits.com. So thanks so much for getting involved. Now, we're going to be around a couple of models for this video. We haven't got the JMA, uh, the Japanese model, because it doesn't go out far enough. It's only going to uh, December uh, at the moment. That'll come on board next month. We're also without the Russian model. Now, we would be without the Russian model anyway, because it would only go to uh, December. But I think uh, for the foreseeable future, Russian model has gone, uh, because the link I've got to it is no longer working. I've done lots of uh, Google searches looking for a new uh, link to the long range Russian model and I'm unable to find uh, the link um, a new link so uh, unless somebody else can find it and send it to me uh, we're going to be without the Russian model now uh, for the foreseeable future great pity that I did rate Russian model, model uh, very highly um, so if you can find it please do send uh, the link to me and we'll be outside including it again in the videos but for the foreseeable future uh, as far as I can see Anyway, it looks like we're going to be without the Russian model um, for the time being. Great pity. Now we've got eight uh, models here uh, to get through, so we've got plenty uh, to be going on with for uh, today's update. And just say, it's going to be quite a long video this, so you can't watch it all in one sitting. Don't worry, uh, you have to come back at any point, really, uh, and uh, watch watch it again or, or watch the rest of the video if you can't watch it all in one go. We kept around the website indefinitely, so uh, don't worry, you can't watch it all in one go. And really just say, enjoy the video, uh, thanks for watching, and hope you find it interesting and informative. So, the first model we're going to start off with is the APEC model, this is the APEC uh, collaboration of various uh, MET agencies in the Southern Hemisphere. It's based in Korea, but it isn't the South Korean model. Uh, it's a collaboration of the uh, South Korea, I think, uh, the Japanese uh, MET agencies in there as well, possibly the Australian uh, MET agency also. This is a 500 bit of a height anomaly prediction for January to March. There's two we could have gone at uh, for this. We could have gone at uh, October to December, but I thought January to March would would be more relevant really for the time frame uh, that we're dealing with um, and it also breaks down to most peers very useful model this and uh, you'll see a lot more of it in subsequent updates I can't show you the monthly breakdowns because um, I've not got time for this video but uh, certainly very interesting uh, model this one do keep an eye finally to it on my uh, links page so for the 500 bit of our high dollar prediction for January to March we've got a trough uh, of uh, low pressure blue coast to the north we've got a ridge out in the Atlantic around there and we're bringing a jet stream through uh, something like that it's a fairly mobile sort of Atlantic uh, driven pattern map for uh, January to March um, but what it's disguising is some very interesting monthly deviations so December's not that interesting but uh, it's got a trough of low pressure around it's probably got a wet month but not particularly cold January is very interesting um, it could be a very cold uh, pattern for January that uh, it's showing and possibly wintry as well and then February it's showing uh, well, high, above average height is taking over, so quite a mild and dry month. So three very distinct uh, months is the breakdown of this sort of anomaly, uh, interestingly, uh, for uh, the winter with January by far and away uh, the most interesting one. But that is what the actual anomaly looks like, stretched out from January uh, to March. You'll see more of the APEC in subsequent updates. Now, going on to the uh, long-range Brazilian model next. These are 500 meter high dominoes, um for the uh, for uh, November to January, not the full uh, winter period. This takes from November to January as far out as we can go with the Brazilian model. Quite unusual this, uh, and I've explained this before, but the blue curves here are, are, are representing 
above average heights, high pressure, with the uh, yellows, oranges and reds uh, extrapolating to below average heights and low pressure, um, normally on a 500 mm bar height, normally virtually it's the other way around. But this is a very unusual looking uh, pattern that uh, we're seeing here. Uh, we've got this very strange looking area of below average heights sitting right over top of the British Isles. We've got uh, hints of ridging in the Atlantic, possibly going up towards Greenland, and then we've got this uh, trough sitting more or less over the top of the UK. Another ridge is down to the southeast. It could be a cold uh, pattern, this. It could be uh, a cold, unsettled scenario if you feed cold air into that trough. Um, it could be a wintry, uh, cold, wintry uh, scenario. But it's a very unusual looking chart, and I think we're best to leave this alone really for this month of Brazilian Mel. Come back to it next month and hopefully uh, the pattern will be simplified a little bit. But on the face value it could be hinting at uh, sort of a cold uh, wintry uh, period from November to January. But there's not enough there to be going on really and I think it is best to leave that alone and hope that next month becomes a little bit more simple. We're going to go on to the UK Met Office next. This would be mean sea level pressure anomaly for December to February for the winter period. And if you want a cold winter, well, look away now because this is about as bad as it gets. We've got this area of high pressure uh, sitting around the Azores, reaching in towards Spain and Portugal. We've got all of this blue up to the north of the British Isles. That is uh, very deep areas of low pressure. In between that, we've got a very strong jet stream right running in off the Atlantic, something like that. That really is a zonal, westerly, mild uh, winter pattern, if ever there was one, uh, that we're seeing from the UK Met Office there. That is the, uh, that is a nightmare, <laughs> really, if you want a cold winter. It doesn't get much worse than that in terms of being mild, wet and windy. So you'll not be surprised to see the temperature prediction uh, from the UK Met Office model is for a milder than average winter signal significantly milder than average actually over a degree uh, above average um, and the rainfall signal is coming out wetter than average really for most of northern and western Europe and it's hardly surprising because low pressure uh, to the north of Scotland is in control got a strong jet stream running through it's stormy it's mild it's wet it's windy it's a very similar winter pattern probably to what we had last year so uh, if you want a cold winter well, that's about as bad as we're going to get, actually, uh, in this update. I don't think we'll see any other charts that are anywhere near as bad as that. Now, the next model to look at is the NASA model. We'll go on and have a look at some uh, of the agencies from the United States, starting off with uh, NASA. This is the experimental model from NASA. Uh, 500 mm our height anomalies for uh, the winter, December to February. What we're seeing with this one is that we've got a trough of uh, low pressure sitting to the north of Scotland, so an Settled winter is being signalled out. High pressure is quite a way away actually in the central part of the Atlantic um, and the orientation of those above average heights could allow for some cold air uh, to feed into that trough at times. So whilst it's not a particularly cold winter pattern I don't think uh, the orientation of how things are set up there could allow uh, for some cold air uh, uh, to come into that trough of low pressure at times but the fact that the ridge is going down towards Spain and Portugal is a little bit concerning you get flat westerly flows with that at time but it's not as bad I have to emphasize <laughs> as the UK Met Office the temperature anomaly is coming out near north there we are over there we're in those white curves that's average sort of temperatures for the winter um, and the rainfall is coming out above average we're in the uh, yellow category there uh, indicating that uh, rainfall could be uh, above average not really surprising a trough of low pressure, quite a deep trough sitting to the north of Scotland. Now let's have a look at Hoog Band and Dual next. Hoog is a little bit different. What we're looking at here is an analogue based forecast. It's not a long range seasonal model. What Hoog has done is taken the sea surface temperature anomalies from across the globe uh, in August um, and then compared those sea surface temperature anomalies to past years that have a similar uh, anomaly and then he's come up with an analogue of what may happen progressing forward. So this is the 500 mm height anomaly uh, prediction for uh, December to February for winter and and this is 
totally different, complete flip around on the UK Met Office. What we've got here is lots and lots of blocking around Greenland, going to the north of Scotland and up to the north of Scandinavia just there. We've got these blue curves below average heights uh, from the central part of the Atlantic. The uh, North Atlantic Oscillation, the NAO, is negative with this. It's through, through the floor negative and this trough is coming into southern and central parts of Europe with all the blocking running underneath it. So if have a look at the temperature uh, forecast for the winter, look at that. Most of Europe is firmly in those blue curves cold uh, temperature anomalies much colder uh, than average the core of it is in central parts of russia where the anomaly is going down to around three four degrees below average but most parts of europe coming out at least a degree if not a couple of degrees um below average but british Isles, as ever is on the periphery of all of this we're over here in the far right hand corner we aren't particularly cold we're around average uh, actually that's because we've got the Atlantic trying to bring milder air in, battling against all of that cold sitting to the east over the continent. So it's Battleground UK, and at the very least, whilst it may not be a desperately cold winter in terms of the numbers, at the very least you would be seeing Battleground scenarios, and I don't have to uh, say much more than that, uh, but we will probably be looking at snow events at times. Here's the rainfall forecast for the winter from Hugh Van Adul. Notice all this green in the Atlantic. That is low pressure being blocked in the Atlantic. So very wet through the central part of the Atlantic going towards Spain and Portugal down there. For us, we're coming out nearer normal. Notice all this yellow up here over Scandinavia and going down in towards Germany. That's just indicating all the blocking uh, really up to the northeast. So yeah, we've got cold air coming in from that way. We've got mild wet air coming in from that way. Battleground UK. And whether we come out with a cold and average winter or whether we're close to average, I think at the very least we will be looking at significant snow events at times and no doubt there will be some significantly cold periods. CFS version 2 uh, next, this is the 700 bit of our height anomaly prediction from the CFS the 2 British Isles just here under a trough of low pressure through the winter so you see there is a pattern emerging through many of these models they're trying to uh, place a trough of low pressure somewhere around the British Isles it just depends how much blocking we get as to whether that's a cold trough or an Atlantic driven uh, trough and the CFS is hinting I think at quite a cold trough we've got this ridging going on in the central part of the Atlantic and going up towards green as long as we've got all these yellow cuts up over green things will be very interesting cold air could be feeding into that trough uh, something like that uh, with that uh, ridging going on to the north of the country the temperature forecast for winter is coming out near normal no sign of anything particularly cold showing up on these charts just yet notice the warmer than average conditions are away to the east and the southeast of Europe now when you get warmer than average there because uh, the weather is always looking for an equilibrium it's always trying to balance itself out um, so when you've got it warm in the east and the southeast very often you'll get it cold in the west and the northwest and it's the converse uh, 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 also if you get it cold in the north west you'll tend to get it if you get it uh, mild i should say in the north and the west you'll tend to get it cold in the east and the southeast so the fact we've got so much warmth here in the east and the southeast could if you put it together with a 700 bit of a high normally prediction indicate that this area up here should probably uh, be coming out cold have a look at the uh, rainfall anomaly from the CFS V2. Uh, we see that much of Central Europe is indicated to have a wet winter, particularly through uh, northern parts of Spain and Portugal, going into France, going to southern Germany as well. And that just fringes into the south of England. I think what's going on there is that the jet stream is probably going something like that through the Atlantic and then down uh, somewhere around there. Now notice all of this uh, orange uh, up to the north that is indicating drier than average precipitation anomalies through Iceland so that could be indicating high pressure up there. Norway as well coming out drier than average could be Scandinavian blocking and even for northern parts of Scotland there is a hint of a little bit of high pressure so I think overall we're probably looking at quite a bit of block up over northern latitudes here uh, with the trough running south uh, the jet I should say running south bringing low pressure 
into these sort of areas. That could well be indicating, hinting at a cold winter. And I've been keeping an eye on the daily updates from the CFS V2 uh, to websites like theweatheroutlook.com. And they're definitely trending, or definitely have been trending over the last uh, couple of weeks, to more colder winter scenarios. This is the 700 mm height normally for January. Just thought I'd very quickly throw this one in. And uh, we've got all of this blocking being indicated over Greenland up here and in the central part of uh, the northern Atlantic. There's that cold trough over the and extending through the North Sea into Scandinavia. I think we're almost certainly bleeding cold air into that trough. So I think that would be going uh, for a cold January from the CFSB to very interesting looking uh, charts. We'll keep an eye on that one. Now going through to Beijing Climate Center next. This is the 500 bit of our height anomaly prediction for the winter from the BCC. And uh, it's very similar actually to uh, the CFS. We've got this trough around the British Isles, so it's the same story. There is a pattern through these models, trough around the British Isles, ridge somewhere out to the west or the northwest of the country, perhaps somewhere around Greenland or going down into Newfoundland. Um, bring cold air into that trough at times. It's not absolutely perfect because you would want more northern blocking around Greenland really to get a really cold pan set up and you want to shift that trough a little bit more uh, towards the east. Notice all this ridging across eastern parts of Europe again implying that the warmer temperatures are coming around that ridging into the east of Europe so the colder temperatures should be out in the west and the northwest. The uh, Temperature forecast for winter is coming out near normal, uh, a little bit warmer in the north, a little bit colder in uh, the south. Um, notice again the east of Europe coming out warmer than average. Central Europe is cold. And I have to say I'm not showing you the full picture from the Beijing Climate Centre because uh, if you look at the earlier winter periods, uh, say October to December and then November to January, it's a colder scenario and it sort of gets a little bit milder I think as we go through towards the latter stages of the winter on this model. So it's close to a cold winter pattern, this same as the surface, not quite in place, not quite there uh, with, with a cold winter pattern, but it isn't far off. Very interesting starting point from both the surface and the Beijing Climate Centre. Rainfall anomalies coming out average to a little bit above average warm, uh, wetter than average, and it's not really surprising there's a trough of low pressure over the country. And then finally, we're at the end now, and this is the Jams Tech IOD model. This is a temperature anomaly forecast for the winter, and most of uh, Western Europe, Northwest Europe as well, is colder than average. We're firmly most blue colours. It's going for a cold winter, uh, the Jams Tech most definitely. And in terms of the precipitation anomaly coming out near normal, and this is telling the tale of why it's a cold winter. We've got all of this uh, drier, or all of these drier than average conditions up around Iceland, wetter than average down to the southwest. So we've got a negative NAO. We've got northern blocking, and undoubtedly we're feeding down cold air from that sort of direction and of course with this trough down to the southwest at uh, times the Atlantic would be fighting back and trying to re-establish milder air and we'd be talking about the possibility at least of snow events so very interesting uh, models I'm sure you agree uh, and I think there is a trend amongst these models through this uh, update and the trend is really to have a trough somewhere around the British Isles and some sort of ridging out in the Atlantic through the central and northwestern part of the Atlantic and that possibly allows cold air to entrench into that trough of low pressure now we can't uh, ignore the UK Met Office, that is an absolute disaster if you want a colder than average winter. It doesn't get any worse than the UK Met Office update uh, this month in terms of being westerly, zonal and mild. But all the other models are quite interesting. There are hints uh, in some of the models and more than hints in other models that uh, there could be a very interesting pattern setting up for this winter with a chance of colder conditions. That's very early days, it's only September, so we've got another update to do next month, and we've got the final one to do in November. It'll be very interesting to see where this goes. 
interesting starting points for sure. We've got to wait and see what happens in next month's update. And crucially, I think UK Met Office will be very important next month to see whether that trends towards a colder uh, direction from its very mild pattern this month. But an interesting starting point. Hope you found the video informative and fun. Uh, and that's all for now. Thanks for watching.